Hey everyone, I'm Gizan from TOEFL Bank. This week we had more submissions than expected, so we decided to welcome two guests in this video. Our first guest is Larissa from Brazil, and our second guest is Elsie from India. They will both be answering last week's integrated speaking question. So let's remember the question and analyze their answers. Read the following text and listen to the conversation that follows it. Then answer the question. I don't like the school's decision. Isn't it understandable? I mean, every restaurant is having hardships in getting eggs these days. I get your point. But I think the real problem is the price of other breakfast menu options. The omelet was the only food that was cheap enough for us to eat in the cafeteria every day. They should have at least added more menu options with similar prices or lowered the price of other breakfast meals. I'm pretty sure that the school knows there are students who have financial difficulties. Hmm. At least we have cheaper dinner menu options. We can still enjoy our dinner at a reasonable price. That's another thing that I don't like. It simply means the school can actually provide cheap menu options for our breakfasts, too. The only reason they don't serve cheap meals for breakfast is that the profits aren't as high as dinner time, since students do not frequently use the cafeteria in the morning. This is totally wrong. The school should serve cheaper meals in the morning, too, until they are able to sell the omelets again. I mean, students' welfare should be first. Yeah, I agree. I understand your point. Probably the school will provide a solution in the near future. I hope so. I have a lot of places to spend my money. The man expresses his opinion on the school's decision to remove the omelet from the school cafeteria's menu. State his opinion and the reasons he gives for his claim. The man is dissatisfied with the removal of the omelet because this was the only the cheapest option in the breakfast menu, and there is no other option that is as cheap as the omelet. What also he disagree it's because at dinner the school serves uh, it for a very cheap price, which means they could also serve breakfast as a cheap price, but they don't do it because the demand is very high. That's why the the man is unhappy with the decision. Her pronunciation and pacing were very good, so we give her four points for delivery. Larissa's language use was good overall, except for a couple of mistakes. For example, in the beginning, she said, this were the only, the cheapest option, where it should have been, this was the cheapest option. And after that, she said, what also he disagree it's because. This part could have been, he also disagrees because. Lastly, she said, serve breakfast as a cheap price, which should have been serve breakfast at a cheap price. Because of these minor mistakes, she got three points in language use. Finally, we look at Larissa's topic development. Her explanation of the points in the dialogue was very limited. She did not mention the alternative cheap menu options the school could offer in the morning, the students with financial difficulties, or the school's disregard for the students' welfare. Also where she said, because at dinner the school serves it for a very cheap price. We're not sure what it is. Lastly, the part where she said, they could also serve breakfast at a cheap price, but they don't do it because the demand is very high. It makes the listener think that she may not have understood the content fully. It gives the idea that the school does not offer cheap menu options for breakfast because there are a lot of students eating at the cafeteria in the morning, which in turn does not make sense based on this question. Because of this, Larissa got two points for topic development. Before giving her final score, we'd like to mention one more thing. For integrated questions, you are given 60 seconds to respond, and it would be wise to use this time efficiently. Larissa's answer was about 34 seconds long, 
which means it is within the time limit. But because her answer was rather short, she could not sufficiently explain the main points in the dialogue, which led to her getting a lower score for topic development. Keeping that in mind, Larissa's total score would be somewhere around 2.5 to 3 points for this question. Next, let's listen to Elsie's answer. Two students are discussing about the new announcement, which is about school cafeteria decided to remove omelette from the breakfast menu. The man dis disliked the announcement because he's telling uh, omelette is the only choice they ca students can take because it's cheaper compared to other uh, menus because other menus are higher price. So they have to either lower the price of the other items or they have to replace the item with same price of omelette. Second thing he is telling that um, dinner they provide cheaper menu options because they get higher prof profit. But in the breakfast uh, they are thinking only few students are eating so they don't care about the price of the menu. So he is telling that uh, they have to consider the welfare of the students first. That's why he is uh, he disliked the announcement. Elsie's delivery did not have major issues, but there were some parts where her answer got difficult to follow because of pauses and fillers. Also, there were some words or phrases where her pronunciation was rather unclear, such as either, have to, and they can get. Because of this, Elsie got three points for delivery. There were some grammatical issues with Elsie's answer. For example, she said, announcement which is about school cafeteria decided to remove, where it should have been announcement which is about the school deciding to remove, or alternatively, announcement which is about the school's decision to remove. Secondly, she said other menus are higher price. This should have been other menus have higher prices. And another one is replace the item with the same price of omelette. Here, the meaning is unclear, so we can fix it by changing the wording to replace the omelette with another item with the same price. Last thing we'll mention relating to Elsie's language use is the part where she said they can get higher profit. We could correct this part by either saying they can get higher profits or alternatively, they can get a higher profit. As a result, Elsie got three points for language use. Elsie mentioned most of the key points in the dialogue. However, she did not mention the students with financial difficulties, which can be classified as one of the key points in the dialogue. Next, she mentioned the profit-seeking behavior of the school and the student's welfare, but she did not specifically link the two together. What would have been ideal is if she had a sentence saying, so the man disagrees with the school's decision because he thinks the school should prioritize the student's welfare instead of profits. But her topic development was pretty good overall, and she got three points for this part. With this, Elsie got a total score of three points for this question. Now, let's go and check out next week's integrated speaking question. We're always happy to receive your answers, so please don't hesitate and start recording. We will be waiting for your answers until next Wednesday, November 4th. Thank you for watching, and we'll meet again next Thursday. Read a passage from a business textbook and listen to the lecture that follows. Then answer the question. I think I should give you a little help in understanding what the textbook is saying, since many of you won't be familiar with the concept of desire marketing. Desire marketing is simply a marketing strategy that uses people's desires. A lot of people want to buy expensive products 
because they usually have higher qualities and are fancier than cheaper ones. Also, this desire grows if there is a product that matches one's taste. For instance, lots of warehouse discount stores place luxury items at the front of their display corners. To name a few, items such as yachts and expensive motorcycles. They also sell expensive watches and jewelry, unlike the past warehouse stores. As they display such expensive items comprehensively, they are able to provoke the desire of customers. Customers easily get lured by the optical attractions of the items, and this type of marketing increases the profit of those stores. This is how desire marketing works. Question. Explain desire marketing and how the example used by the professor illustrates the concept. 